Hello, I'm Jim Lampley. Former Olympic gold medalist Yuri Orcus Gamboa burst into professional boxing with considerable fanfare several years ago after defecting from Cuba. He quickly became a star in the featherweight division, winning two world title belts. But in recent years, Gamboa's career has foundered amid business difficulties so onerous that he has appeared in the ring only once in each of the past two years. On June 28th, Gamboa will try to elevate again as he goes to Omaha, Nebraska to challenge world lightweight champion Terrence Crawford on his home turf. Here now, Yuri Orcus Gamboa's greatest hits. October 2008. Gamboa put his 11-0 record on the line against Marcus Ramirez. The underdog Ramirez was eyeing an upset in the opening round. And Gamboa goes down for the third time in his career. When Ramirez is coming across with the right hand, the elbow kind of slips up. Gamboa definitely got caught with that on the chin. Gamboa countered with a knockdown of his own early in round two, then looked to close the show later in the round. I think Gamboa got his pride wounded, and they are trading big time. Oh! Gamboa really took off with his throwing his punches. I don't know if Ramirez can get up and recover from this, and he can't. So Gamboa moves the record to 12 and 0 with 10 knockouts. January 2010, Gamboa faced dangerous bruiser Rogers Matagua. Just as in the Ramirez fight, the fireworks began early. The right and then the left hurt Matagua. Pretty definitive round for Yorkus Gamboa. And down goes Matagua, putting an exclamation point on it. Big first round for Yorkus Gamboa. Round two told the same story. Left hand right to the face by Gamboa. Combination to the head. Oh, left right hurt him. Good left hand to the body, right to the chin. Down goes Mtagwa. Gamboa's too sharp right now. Target practice for the Cyclone of Guantanamo. Good stoppage by referee Steve Smoger. And a sensational performance from Gamboa. Too sharp, too quick, too powerful. March 2011. Following a victory over Orlando Salido, Gamboa put his featherweight title on the line against Jorge Solis. Gamboa wasted little time turning the fight into his own personal highlight reel. Oh, right hand puts down Solis. And there's the speed and the power of Gamboa. This is the Gamboa we want to see, a guy who gambles and goes for the knockout. Gamboa just picking apart Jorge Solis. And down goes Solis. And that is the end of round number three. Oh, right hand puts down Solis. Fourth time he's been down. Solis off balance. Gamboa trying to measure him up and comes in with power shots again. Left hand hurts Solis. Right hand combination. Down goes Solis. David Field stops it here in the fourth. That's the Gamboa we were all waiting to see. This is a coming out party for him, I think. September 2011. Gamboa faced off with hard-hitting Mexican Daniel Ponce de Leon. Gamboa's speed kept the dangerous southpaw at bay. Good right hand by Gamboa. De Leon walked right into it. Oh, what a right hand by Gamboa. Gamboa's dominating speed advantage is beginning to show up. Hard right hand by Gamboa momentarily wobbled Ponce de Leon. While Gamboa landed the right hand at will throughout the fight, he could never put Ponce de Leon on the canvas. The action came to a halt in round eight. Their heads come together and clash, and there's blood above the left eye of Ponce de Leon. Accidental headbutt. Conventional fighter against a southpaw, both guys trying to be offensively aggressive at times. It's the kind of thing which was bound to happen. They're gonna stop it. Going to the judges' scorecards after eight rounds, Gamboa easily claimed a unanimous decision victory. December 2012. Following a 15-month layoff, Gamboa finally returned to the ring, moving up to 130 pounds to face Michael Ferenas. Early on, Gamboa's accuracy looked sharp. Now Gamboa is starting to land and find the target. Good body shots indeed by Gamboa. This time Ferenas takes it pretty well and comes back. Down goes Ferenas on a combination by Gamboa. It wasn't that hard of a punch, but I think Ferenas just did not see it coming. Entering the middle rounds, Morenas tried to take advantage of Gamboa's ring rust, landing some solid shots of his own. But Gamboa countered back in round seven.
touched his glove to the canvas. That's a knockdown for Gamboa. Second knockdown of the fight. And Gamboa came out this round like he intends to get him out of here this round. You better be careful. He's swinging wide, trying to nail Farinas with these big shots, and he's leaving himself open to a potential counter left hand stop, stop, up the middle. Stop, stop, stop. And eager Gamboa attempted to close the show in round nine, but his aggression gave Farinas an opening. And now Gamboa backs him into the corner, and Farinas starts to wobble, and Gamboa is making constant contact here, and down goes Gamboa on a straight left-hand counter. Had he gone to Farinas' body, he would have he stopped Farinas right there, but he wouldn't go to the body. He kept going to the head and allowed Farinas to throw a head shot back. Gamboa overcame the knockdown, claiming a unanimous decision victory. June 2013. Gamboa made his lightweight debut against Colombian Darlis Perez. Gamboa took a scorecard lead in the opening round. And down he goes. That's a knockdown. That's a knockdown. The referee is ruling it a knockdown. It was a low contact knockdown, that's for sure. The rounds following the knockdown were marked by stretches of inactivity, with Gamboa building up a steady lead, fighting from the outside. In the later rounds, Perez began to find his timing and attacked in round 11. That looked like a knockdown to me on a perfect left-hand shot by Darlin Perez, and the referee is ruling it a slip. We see the left foot of Gamboa slip on the signage in the ring. But I also think Perez landed a shot, but I don't know if it was hard enough to knock him down. It's a tough call. Gamboa went on to win the unanimous decision. Now, 20 years later, he's one of the top pound-for-pound -pound fighters in boxing and was widely chosen as 2012's Fighter of the Year. Here now, Nonito Donaire's greatest hits. February 2011, Donaire challenged Fernando Montiel for the bantamweight title. The Filipino Flash showcased his speed and power early in a fight that wouldn't make it out of the second round. Good right hand and a left drops Montiel! And Russell Moore is gonna let it continue. Now he stops it. Nonito Donaire with a counter left after absorbing a right. He's on top of the world tonight. February 2012. Following a win over Omar Narvaez, Donaire moved up to 122 pounds and faced off with Wilfredo Vasquez Jr. for a vacant belt. After a patient start, Donaire found an opening in round three. And he rips Vasquez with a left hook lead. Can he finish him now? And it just shows how much power that he has for a small fighter. Vasquez gets out of the corner and kind of grins as if that's a victory. An overly cautious Vasquez finally began engaging in the middle rounds. Hard right hand by Vasquez, his best punch of the fight. He's wanting Vasquez to come and give him more opportunities to counter punch. Hard left hook by Donaire, momentarily wobbled Vasquez. With Vasquez taking a more aggressive approach, Donaire perfected his timing in round nine. What a couple of punches. Tremendous uppercut and the left hook to put him down. There we saw some signs of that quick handed power. Battling through a ruptured vein in his left hand, Donaire claimed a split decision victory, winning a Super Bantamweight title. July 2012, 122-pound unification bout with Jeffrey Matabula. The South African stood four and a half inches taller than Donaire, and the Filipino Flash tried to neutralize that advantage quickly. Well, when Donaire closes the gap, he negates the height advantage for Matabula. And that's what Felico has to do, just get close to him and put those big punches on him and try to get him out as quick as he can. Matabula was willing to trade inside with Donaire, but left himself open at the end of round four. Go, left hand, drops Matabula. First down in his career, he's been down on the canvas, a left hand near the end of round four. Bouncing back from the knockdown, Matabula kept up an active work rate, but Donaire continued to land the bigger shots, wearing his opponent down in the championship rounds. See what happens when he uses this jab. Sets up the right hand there. He hurt Matabula with that right hand, I guarantee. That's why Matabula is not punching now. He looks like he broke his jaw, Roy, the way he's hanging open. Fighting through a broken jaw, Matabula lasted all 12 rounds. But Donaire claimed a unanimous decision victory. October 2012. Japanese veteran Toshiaki Nishioka put his 16-fight win streak on the line to challenge Donaire. As in most recent fights, 
Donaire's opponent was cautious early. And Nishioka so far seems intimidated by Donaire's power. Donaire right here is landing some good body shots, as you see. Landing a good straight right to the head every now and then. And that's all he can get. So just take what you can get until the store opens up. By round six, Nishioka finally began opening up. And Donaire capitalized. See that left uppercut right there? That's the shot because he's holding that right hand up. Oh, Nishioka down. Short shot inside. Right hand over the top, straight right hand. Nishioka says, bring it on. Left hand from Donaire. As Nishioka chose to engage, it became apparent he couldn't compete with the power of Donaire. There they go, opening up power shots. Left hand to the body by Donaire scores. Nishioka steps in with a combination. Oh, down goes Nishioka from a counter shot. Now the referee steps in and stops it. Nishioka's corner jumped in to protect him. Any time he chose to truly fight back, he got dropped. December 2012. Donaire's fourth fight of the calendar year saw him squaring off with Jorge Arce. The Mexican veteran had built his career on entertaining action fights, and Donaire was happy to engage in round two. The left hook upstairs, and there goes Arce to the canvas on a quick, short, straight right hand. The aggression of Arce played right into Donaire's hand, bringing the night to an end in round three. And here's Donaire looking for the knockout, and Arce's down again. Second knockdown of the fight for Nonito Donaire, and Jorge Arce is rubbing a glove against his left eye. Good right hand by Donaire, and another left uppercut. And down goes Arce on a brilliant left hook, and that just might be that, and it is. He has one of the best left hooks in the business today. When he hits him with that, it's usually lights out. Nonito Donaire with his fourth win of 2012.